Right, so for this tutorial, uh, I don't really have overt stylistic tendencies, but I do have practices, I'd say, or best practices, as in practices that worked best for me. So I'm going to do a recreation or partial recreation of my most recent painting, The Last Air. When doing this sort of painting, I already have extensive amount of references, uh, prior preparation, sketches, all these sorts of things beforehand, before we even begin to place the drawing on the canvas. Oh, whoops, there goes my pen. So what I did here was a very rough, rudimentary drawing of the subject, the father and his son. And it doesn't need to be, the drawing doesn't need to be perfect, and it certainly doesn't need to be detailed, but it just needs to be solid enough to work off of. So speaking of references, another thing that you're going to need is your uh, clear models. In this case, uh, I chose, uh, there's more, but it can be boiled down to these. I frequently look at Rembrandt. Or specifically the late Rembrandt. Uh, the paintings by Olga Posnanska, uh, the late Titian, and of course Odd Nerdrum. Having these paintings uh, next to you in a sort of mood board uh, will keep you right on track. It's a kind of compass. So the first thing we do when we have our drawing set up is I begin looking for the lights. So I know that the lighting is going to come from a source from in from over here down up. So it's going to kiss. Oops. It's going to kiss the bottom over here. And it's going to kiss the face of the young boy as he is as his life is fading away. The bottom of the um, and some of the fingers, the neck, a bit of the here, chest, some of the neck, and as you work on this uh, grisaille, you can take the you take the opportunity to continue improving the drawing that you uh, established. First, you don't want to go too detailed, of course, but you do want to generally always try to make it better as you go on. You're not making a perfect reside. This is just a start. And then we can take a darker color and re-accentuate uh, some of the features, such as separating the boy from his father slightly. Turning some form. And since I do want this place to be dark, I'll generally include a, a dark layer everywhere. We darken everywhere. With a sort of. What I like, like a vignette. That's the word I was looking for, a vignette. Because we are. Uh, this is for the purpose of simulating the eyeball. You know, we are looking out of a oval thing, usually, into a square canvas.
something I noticed as well is that we're losing a little bit too much information back here, so I am going to include a handle over here. Should land about, yep, yeah, the third of the pick, like in one of the rule of thirds. Perfect. And this will allow us to show off the back of the head. The back. And then the tops of the fingers. Beautiful. We also have enough, uh, this stage I can also begin establishing things such as jewelry, in this case, uh, chokers, because that is very fashionable for the time. A nice big bracelet, a ring to represent their status as noblemen, chokers, another bracelet, have another bracelet over here and some of the highlights establish some of the darks of the nose perfect after this i can begin playing around with the dead color layer. Uh, the dead color layer is a layer that uh, you use to simply begin playing around with approximations of the final colors. They don't need to be, well, they don't need to be the actual colors, but this is just to begin uh, inserting color into the picture in a safe way. So I do want these guys to be pink. So I'm gonna take a multiply layer that's too dark. And we can do this with confidence because we always have the underdrawing to refer back to. I'm also going to glaze a bit of the background. The armor. And I want that flame to be very bright yellow. Some reds. So now that we have all of this in place, uh, well now we need to baptize the drawing, or as it's called, the Baltisar system where we take a transparent white or other color. In this case, I'm going to use like a, an off yellow and just completely soak the drawing in that color. Make sure, you have to make sure it's transparent. This is to establish the grays of the picture. And this is also a good excuse to begin establishing some texture. After that's there, uh, we can begin bringing back some of the tonal qualities which we lost by taking a eraser with low opacity and low flow and sort of 
speeding the drawing slightly. You can essentially paint the picture entirely with this, just with this step back and forth. So now we take a multiply layer or like or a glaze and we can begin regaining some of the darks we lost. More like more of the striking darks I should say. Reaffirming some of the initial drawing and working to improve it. Re-establishing some of the noses here. Eyes. The worried brow of the father. I'm gonna make sure this expression is intense. Uh, something else that you might notice is that I haven't really clearly defined the hand too much. This is intentional. The focus of our composition is uh, this, the father and the son. So I'm going to let other objects that are near the periphery of the picture melt together. This is why the hand, the fingers are sort of seeping into the ahead of the sun. This is also this also provides a nice psychological effect which is uniting the father and the son as the son's last moments of life fade from his uh, from his mortar coil. Really good dramatic stuff. So we made a multiply. Then we make another layer, this time a scumble, and we work with lighter colors to continue refining the drawing. Lighter and opaque colors. They don't need to be completely light always, but you are working opaquely now. This is uh, re-establishing the drawing rather than toning. And these two steps, uh, glazing and scumbling, are essentially the bread and butter of this uh, technique or this approach. Uh, Titian said that even 40 glazes is not enough 
of course, uh, don't take that too literally, but what it means is that you constantly go back and forth uh, coloring or toning and fixing the drawing, toning and fixing the drawing. And it's all these layers uh, that create a sort of vivacity with the picture. And this technique, uh, which I happen to enjoy, also encourages continuous what's the word continuous uh improvement of the drawing because you're always trying to make it better it's like there is no uh one final drawing at the start and then everything else is color this technique uh, at least to me encourages you to constantly better the drawing Let's re-establish some of the yellows here. Let's kiss, let's kiss this over here very gently. This on the back of the father's head. Re-establishing some of the hand. Oop, that's too dark light, I mean. That's too cool, I should say. opportunity as well to make some of the shadows over here some of the contact shadows with the bracelet oh i forgot to add a necklace so silly me this is also the good thing uh since we're working within layers and scumbles uh opaque and transparent you can add and improve the composition as you go so i'm gonna add a necklace Minding the gravity. And I'm going to make this moon motif also appear in the uh, ring. Another multiply layer. Oh, wait, before that we do that, I do want to. Yeah, that's good. Multiply layer. And applying a light, warm glaze everywhere. Which we can always pull back from. You can also take this opportunity to, uh, erasing is your friend in these sorts of things. You can reveal the, you can use the layer underneath to contrast the glazing you put on top. And same goes for the scumble. It all works off of each other very nicely. I'm going to take this opportunity to add some indentations for whiskers. Pull off the eyes a little bit. Restore some of that original light. And now we do another scumble. We would go back and forth, back and forth, scumbling and glazing and scumbling and glazing. And like any good cook show, I already have a finish uh, prepared um, to those who haven't seen it. Here's the final picture. Or rather, here is a more worked on version with continuous glazes and scumbles and glazes and scumbles. I added a candle over here because I felt that that was... It would help. It would help the composition, and it would 
also add to the story that's going on. And usually by the time uh, we're finished, when you think you're finished with the composition, um, what I like to do at the end is a simple, uh, what I call an a la prima pass, which is taking one final layer and just going completely opaque on everything and using it's the process of making of uh, fixing smaller issues while reachieving a kind of freshness to the drawing you're essentially trying to both fix and sort of re-establish the original sketch at the top of the picture You know, keeping that nice freshness about the whole thing. Because working within layers and scumbles, layers and scumbles, can make the drawing look a little bit too uh, stuffy sometimes. While it does give a nice effect, it is also nice to have that final cohesive quality. This here again once more. Made that a little too pungent, taking an eraser and tapping that. Oops, tapping that down a little. And that's about as much as I can show. Uh, this process is still relatively new to me, but it has been has shown promise due to its very uh, due to the nature, its flexible nature and workable. It is based on workshop painting, uh, so this sort of painting would have been done by multiple people. It's uh, essentially um, almost conveyor line painting. Uh, the final ala prima step would be represented by the head of the studio looking at all the collective work of the students and essentially painting on top of it to give the final touches. Uh, painting was a more thorough job back then, and having a guaranteed final result was part of the game, so I can at least take comfort in that the great masters used a variation of this technique, and it worked for them because... Uh, they made a lot of paintings, and while I don't have a workshop, I have a computer, so I can at least uh, not have to worry about physical media and things along those lines. Let's take advantage of that. And 